How do stars die? Or a better question might be, do they actually die at all? When we think about death, it usually means the end. But for stars, it's not quite that simple. They don't just burn out, they transform into something new and continue to play a role in the universe's epic saga. Stars are born out of giant clouds of dust and gas known as nebulae. When enough material clumps together, the pressure becomes so intense that nuclear fusion kicks off in the core, and voila, a star is born. Most stars spend the majority of their existence in a stage called the main sequence, where they're burning hydrogen into helium. Our own sun is in this stage, and it's a pretty stable period in a star's life. But nothing lasts forever, right? Depending on their mass, stars can live from a few million to billions of years. The more massive the star, the shorter its lifespan. It's kind of like living life in the fast lane. Bigger stars burn through their fuel much quicker. So when a star exhausts its nuclear fuel, the next chapter in its life begins. And this is where things get really interesting. Now, calling this next phase death might be a bit misleading because it's more about transformation. For smaller stars like our sun, this next stage is a graceful exit. They swell into red giants, shed their outer layers, and eventually shrink down into an area about the size of Earth. These stellar cores are white dwarfs, extremely dense and composed mostly of carbon and oxygen. They mark the end of the star's nuclear burning days, but they continue to glow with residual heat for trillions of years. It's like they're saying, I may be retired, but I'm still shining. Over time, they'll fade and cool, becoming what astronomers call black dwarfs, although the universe isn't old enough yet for any black dwarfs to exist. On the flip side, massive stars go out with a bang, quite literally. When they run out of fuel, they don't go gentle into that good night. They explode in a supernova. This catastrophic explosion is so bright that it can outshine entire galaxies and often leads to the formation of either a neutron star, or if the star is massive enough, a black hole. If the leftover core is about 1.4 to 3 times the mass of our sun, it becomes a neutron star. These are the densest and smallest stars known with a radius of only about 10 kilometers, but a mass greater than that of our sun. Imagine cramming the mass of the sun into a city-sized sphere. Now that's dense. Neutron stars are also incredibly fast spinners, and some emit beams of electromagnetic radiation as pulsars. If you ever heard a pulsar, it would sound like a precise cosmic lighthouse, sweeping its beam across the universe in regular pulses. And here's a fun fact. The material in neutron stars is so dense that a sugar cube-sized amount of it would weigh about a billion tons on Earth. But sometimes, if the core's mass is even greater, it collapses into a black hole, a point in space where gravity pulls so strongly that not even light can escape. It's like the universe's best-kept secret. Everything that crosses the event horizon, the boundary around the black hole, is swallowed up and hidden from view. Talk about an extreme makeover. Now, you might wonder, what happens next? Do these cosmic objects like neutron stars, black holes, and black dwarfs, do they ever die, or what do they transform into? Starting with neutron stars, their future is still a subject of scientific debate. Over unimaginably long timescales, it's theorized that neutron stars might slowly cool down and fade away as they emit radiation. But there's also the possibility they could end up as black holes if they gain enough mass from their surroundings to cross the critical threshold needed for further collapse. So, in a sense, their journey might not have a definitive end, just a slow transformation into either obscurity or a new form of extreme gravity. As for black holes, these might be the closest thing the universe has to an eternal object, at least within the current understanding of physics. According to theories like Hawking radiation, black holes could eventually evaporate over astronomical timescales, perhaps over 10 to the 100 years, a number so large it's hard to even comprehend. As they evaporate, they would lose mass and simply fade from existence, 
transforming their energy back into the universe. And what about black dwarfs? Since no black dwarfs yet exist, they are a theoretical future state of white dwarfs. We can only speculate based on our understanding of physics. It's expected that these objects would also slowly cool and fade away, radiating their remaining heat over trillions of years until they are essentially cold, dark stones floating through space. But what about the universe itself? Does it die? Current theories suggest a few possible outcomes. The Big Freeze, where the universe continues expanding forever, cooling as it goes. The Big Crunch, a potential scenario where the universe collapses back in on itself. Or the Big Rip, where the universe tears itself apart. Each scenario points to transformation on an unimaginable scale, with everything in the universe continuing to change form in one way or another. So with all these transformations, it seems that in the universe, Death is not an end, but a metamorphosis. Everything that makes up a star gets recycled in one way or another. The universe is kind of like an eternal artist, constantly reshaping its materials into new forms. This brings us to a philosophical bend. If stars transform instead of dying in the traditional sense, does anything in the universe ever really die? Matter and energy are conserved, changing forms but never disappearing. It poses an interesting question about our own perceptions of life and death. In the cosmos, everything is in flux, always changing and evolving. Nothing truly dies, it just transitions. It's a pretty comforting thought, isn't it? That in the grand scheme of things, every end is just a new beginning. Don't forget to watch the video on the right and subscribe. Thanks for being part of Cosmonology.